Late one evening, Lily sat alone in her childhood home, sorting through old family photos. The creaky house had been passed down for generations, its walls filled with memories. Her parents had always spoken of strange things happening there, but she brushed it off as old superstition. As the night deepened, Lily felt a chill in the air. The wind outside howled against the windows, but it was a sound from inside the house that caught her attention. A faint whisper echoed from the hallway. At first she thought it was the wind, but when she heard her name being called, Lily, she froze. Her heart pounded as she stood up, clutching the armrest of her chair. The voice grew louder, closer, urging her to follow. Trembling, she walked toward the sound, down the dark hallway where shadows danced against the walls. The whispers led her to the attic door. It hadn't been opened in years. She stared at it, her mind racing. There was no way she was going up there. But the voice grew more insistent, almost pleading now. Her hand moved on its own as if guided by an invisible force, gripping the cold, rusted handle. The door creaked open. The attic was dark and smelled of old wood and dust. Moonlight filtered in through a small cracked window, casting an eerie glow. In the far corner, a large mirror stood. Lily had never seen it before. Her reflection looked back at her, but something was off. The figure in the mirror smiled, even though Lily's face was expressionless. She felt her throat tighten, her breath hitching. The reflection slowly raised a hand and pointed behind her. Terrified, Lily turned around, expecting to see a figure in the shadows, but there was nothing. When she looked back at the mirror, her reflection was gone. A cold hand gripped her shoulder. She screamed, bolting out of the attic. The whispers turned into screams, echoing through the house as she fled. Outside, gasping for breath, she glanced back at the window. In the reflection of the glass, a figure stood watching her, smiling eerily. Emily had always loved dolls. Her room was filled with them, porcelain faces staring down from every shelf. But there was one doll she had forgotten left in the dusty corner of the attic for years until one day she found it again. The doll was old, dressed in a faded blue gown, its eyes wide and glassy. Emily couldn't remember where it had come from, but something about it unnerved her. She set it on a shelf, far from the others, trying to ignore the feeling of unease. That night, strange things began to happen. Emily woke to the sound of soft footsteps. She lay still, listening. It wasn't her parents. They were fast asleep. Slowly, she turned her head toward the shelf. The doll was no longer there. Panic gripped her as she scanned the room. The doll now sat on her desk, its head tilted slightly as if watching her. Emily's breath quickened. She hadn't moved it. The next night it happened again. This time the doll was closer, sitting on her bedside table. Emily felt as if those glassy eyes were boring into her soul, waiting, watching. She decided to get rid of it. The following day she took the doll out to the woods and buried it deep in the ground. Relief washed over her as she returned home. That night she slept peacefully, but in the morning she woke to find the doll sitting at the foot of her bed, dirt smeared across its face. A note was tucked into its hands. In shaky, childlike writing it read, You can't get rid of me. Tom was a night guard at an old abandoned asylum. His shifts were long and quiet with nothing but the sound of his footsteps echoing through the decaying halls. The place had been shut down for decades, but the locals whispered about ghosts haunting the halls, the spirits of patients who had never left. One night, as Tom was making his rounds, he saw something out of the corner of his eye. A shadow moved at the end of the hallway. He dismissed it as a trick of the light, but when it happened again, he decided to investigate. He walked slowly, flashlight in hand, the beam cutting through the thick darkness. As he approached the far end, he saw it, a man standing in the shadows, his back to Tom. Hey! Tom called out, his voice echoing down the hallway. The figure didn't move. Tom took a step closer. The figure was tall, with tattered clothes that looked like they belonged to a patient. His head was bowed, shoulders hunched as if in pain. Tom's pulse quickened as he reached out to touch the man's shoulder. Suddenly the figure turned around. Tom gasped, stumbling backward. 
The man had no face, just smooth, featureless skin where his eyes, nose and mouth should be. The faceless man stepped toward him, arms outstretched. Tom ran, heart pounding in his chest. But no matter how far he ran, he could hear footsteps behind him getting closer. He didn't stop until he burst out of the asylum doors, vowing never to return. But every night since, he's felt those footsteps behind him no matter where he goes.